Hey everybody, Richard here with Elsys, the Amplimax and the 4G here behind me. I get a lot of questions about the Elsys, specifically the Amplimax Ultra. This is their 5G outdoor directional antenna and modem together unit. So it's a 5G modem inside of a directional panel antenna. It's got 4x4 MIMO connections to the modem and it provides a single Ethernet connection back down to whatever you want to plug it into, whether it be directly to a PC, to a router, or if you're capable of putting a WAN internet connection through a switch, you can do that as well. So it provides internet, it gets signal because it's outdoors and has a good powerful antenna in it, and it feeds that back into your house using cellular, US cellular, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, uh, other markets around the world even. And a lot of people will ask me, well, what does the interface look like? How do you set it up? What's the, the process to configure it? I'd like to see that before I even think about purchasing it. And that is a fair question. Overall, we have extensive tutorials on how to set these up, and especially for individual cell carriers, depending on what types of SIM and plan you get. You have to remember, this is an unlocked device. It's not locked to a particular carrier. Elsys is going through and has gone through certification processes for AT&T and T-Mobile, US Cellular and so on. But even still, because it's not a branded device with AT&T's logo on it or T-Mobile or Verizon or so forth, it's an unlocked device. So you have to set it up specifically for the plan that you have. And today we have unlimited internet plans, business internet plans. We have hotspot plans and so forth and they all have specific settings you can't just pop a sim card in and it works so most people are correct in asking like hey what does it take to set up and that is a fair question and again we have tons of resources and tutorials to walk you through in both like this video as well as text depending on how you like to follow tutorials and walkthroughs but is it so hard that it requires tutorials and walkthroughs no it's, it's not that hard it's just that to make the content for more than just the techie or more than just the non-techie, it would take tons and tons and tons of videos. So I like to utilize a single teaching style, which the more technical can skip through faster and the least technical can still follow. And so that requires a lot of layout, a lot of different visual or, or text resources to communicate that in a singular fashion, but to multiple types of people. Again, can I see the interface beforehand? We're, that's what we're going to do right now. I'm not going to go through the setup process because again, at t T-Mobile, Verizon, US Cellular, on and on around the world, different plans, different types, they do require little nuances and we don't have time to just show it all out like that. That's what the tutorial section's for. It's for our customers who purchase and then they have access to that and it's a complete walkthrough. And of course, you'll always have access to our support one-on-one -on -one if needed, troubleshooting and so forth. But let's get into the web UI so that you can see exactly what it looks like when you log into the Elsys Amp Ample Max and Ultra, but we're gonna focus just on the Ultra. The Ample Max is similar. It's got a, a little bit older, but actually a little bit more detailed web UI. That's not the point of today's video. The Elsys Ample Max Ultra 5G modem. Let's look at the uh, web interface and show you kind of the different sections and where you would need to put in some settings. It's very simple. So if we transition to our web browser, the first thing is I always recommend that you use an incognito or private, depending on your browser type, browser window and fresh. It's not recommended to have multiple windows open. Sometimes they tend to share cache. So you'll want to make sure that you only utilize a single window on the device that you're using connected to your Elsa Sample Max. Now I've got mine connected here via ethernet and you'll see it's connected right now. The unit also had some text scrolling across after approximately 20 minutes that'll shut off you can actually set that in, in future updates that are coming soon as of making this video but right now it's about 20 30 minutes and it shuts off on its own if you access the web ui it will turn back on so there's that but again you can see i'm on my ethernet connection on my computer it's a little usb dongle type device but it is connected you'll need to know how to do that yourself on yours now the web interface is actually a simple IP address, 192.168.10.254, this is really bright in my face, sorry, it, slash home, or you don't even have to do that really. Uh, you can actually just 
make it the normal IP address, but it is an IP address. It's local. You're connected directly to it. It doesn't need certs or anything. So it's, it doesn't have to be secure and private. You're, you're connected directly to it. It'll load this web UI and you'll notice mine has no SIM card in it right now. So I have no signal or connection, but this is the basic homepage of the Amplemax Ultra. And it'll give you basic information up here at the top, whether your SIM card is seen. If it is, we'll, we'll see a blue mark there instead of red. It'll show your actual cell carrier here, T-Mole, VR, VRW, VZW, I think, ATT, so forth. Uh, and then the signal level as well in a percentage. And then if it's 4G or 5G that it's connected to, it's primary. And then a blue check for connected. So red, if it doesn't have good information, blue, if it, if it does have good information. Now, you can toggle your SIM card to an automatic detect, only SIM 1 or only SIM 2. And then there's failover options for the SIM card. That can be done there. Connection type is a setting that's just like operating bands. You can, you can set whether or not it's LTE only, or if it's 5G only, or LTE and 5G. Your APN section, you would check here, turn this thing off so it doesn't automatically try to guess at what APN you're using, which is a setting for your SIM card to allow connection to the, the carrier on the plan type that you have. That's where you would set that. And I can click into it right now. It'll take you to this page and you put in a little bit of information here based on what type of plan and carrier you have, and including the protocol that you want to use on the modems, modem to cell carrier side connection. If you want IPv4 only, IPv6 only, or have a dual stack connection that allows both. Typically, you'll just leave it on dual. The system status page is a little bit more information. It'll show you when you're connected, your ethernet port information, system power on time, voltage, it even shows your consumption level. This is where you will see your signal information, the bands you're connected to. So a little bit more information there. Connection settings, this is where you'll set up your connection. There's Ethernet port settings, leave that alone. Honestly, if you know what you're doing, you won't need to ask. If you don't, if you need to ask, if you're not sure on this page, just leave it alone, okay? Cellular connection though, this is where again, you can come to set your APN. Uh, band locking, again, same as operating bands or the 5G, 4G only, or 4G plus 5G, which is non-standalone. LAN IP protocol, this is the output side right here of the actual Amplimax Ultra. That's whether or not you want it to be only IPv4 or communicate both IPv4 or IPv6. This unit originally or by default comes in a router mode, but it's not really a router. It can handle multiple devices through a switch, yes, but it's not meant to, not really. There's no real firewall settings. There's actually no firewall settings. There's nothing that you can do for, um, like a v you can't put a VPN on it. You can't do any controls. It's literally just a DHCP server and it hands out a couple IP addresses. So in general, even in the router mode, you're just handing it off to another true router that, that you would want to do all the jobs. You can also though, set it in bridge mode, which is, you could effectively call it IP pass through. So it takes the IP address that comes through from the internet side, and then it takes that IP and passes it through to whatever is connected to that port. That here is in the settings, right? LAN IP protocol, again, we just talked about that. IPv6 464 XLAT, typically you just leave that on. What that is is on IPv6 only cellular connections like currently T-Mobile's 5G standalone network, the modem itself will create an interface for IPv4 traffic to proxy and tunnel through IPv6. And that's, that's created on the modem. It's a weird IP address, 192.0.0.2 or something. And that is the one, that's where you would turn that off if you wanted to, uh, which could effectively disable your connection. But again, if you know what you're doing, turn it off. Otherwise, leave it alone. And then DNS v4 and v6, you can set on the modem for devices that it's connected to, to request DNS um, servers. This is currently set by default to Google servers. You can change it if you want to Cloudflare or Quad9 or private DNS or anything like that. That this is, would be for the modem itself. So if any requests from your network go upstream to the modem or even potentially to the carrier, the modem can answer DNS requests for what, the, what server to use. 
Uh, typically, I like to have this set manually and then also have it on your router set so that you, you try your best to override the cell carrier's DNS if you so care to do so. You would want to, any changes that you make, you would save it right there. You click save, it takes about five minutes to fully set, and it'll also ask you if you wanna restart the unit, you probably should. Now there's also a section for sending AT commands to the modem. This is a lot more advanced. Sometimes we do need to send a actual command to the modem so that it can receive certain information that just is not covered in the settings page or something like that. These are special cases and this is a little bit more advanced though it's not hard to do so we have it outlined in our tutorials when it's necessary and we completely and totally go step by step for this so that you can't mess anything up and it's not really a spot where you could potentially mess anything up. It's just when this is needed, it is needed. So you'll have to do that. So that is on this page. The links are on our, our help page. You can also obviously see it here in the video where you can send AT commands to the modem itself. And if you want to send the commands, it's real simple. You just send it and it gives a code back to you or a response. So if it's not something that it supports, or if you entered it incorrectly, or had a typo, or if you entered it in properly, there's a whole lot of things here. But again, this is fully guided. If you don't need the guidance, this is where you would go to send commands. If you do need the guidance, obviously we do it fully step by step in our tutorials. Settings page, this is where you would potentially turn on or off a watchdog. That's like to check to see if it's online. If it's not, reboot itself. Update your software right here. You can change the language if you like of the interface. You could turn on a password and protect with username and password this entire interface. And then obviously restore to factor defaults, pretty straightforward. Utility blind search. That is a feature that is pretty cool where it will just kind of, you leave the SIM card out, you do the blind search and it'll tell you relatively speaking, the best strongest signal of any particular band that it can find per carrier. So at and Verizon, T-Mobile, it'll find about three carriers and then the strongest of any single signal that it finds, it will then tell you what that percentage is. It's not super duper detailed. It's very simplistic, but it's pretty cool. It'll tell you if you even see any Verizon, T-Mobile, at and so forth. And then TTL-HL configuration. If your particular SIM card and carrier plan require it, then it's got an entry right here. Blind search is the same here as it is down here on the left. Restart Amplimax is where you reboot the unit without powering it down. And then operating bands, well, I'll finally go here. You can turn on or off 4G bands from here, or you can manually turn them off one at a time here, like so. And then once you've selected or deselected the ones you want to keep or not keep, click save and it'll reboot and apply those settings. And then here, 5G mode, this is where you would turn on the automatic mode, standalone 5G mode only, so it won't use any LTE as a connection point, or non-standalone, where it does use LTE as its primary band and secondaries, as well as 5G for secondaries. You can set that there if you like. Again, make sure you click save and then restart the unit. Uh, again, you can fully turn off 4G like so, or you can turn on 4G and turn off 5G completely, so it only uses LTE bands. 3G is not really functional, even though it's there. In the US, it doesn't, there's no 3G, so. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That is the entire user interface. It's very small. There isn't really much to do there because it's a simple high power connection, high strength antenna to the internet to feed it back to your system. Very simple. Everybody who wants to see the web interface and how to set it up, that's it, it's all right there. The details depend on your carrier and plan and there's very little to it. Again, our help pages walk through everything that we have questions on. People ask us a bunch of stuff. We have FAQs, what happens if this, how do I set up that? All of those details are on our help pages. But if you just wanted to see what the interface looks like and what it takes to set up an Elsys Amplimax Ultra, that's it.